say that I am nowhere near ready to die in the sense that I would love to see certain things happen before that occurs for me. So I'm not trying to sit here and tell anybody, well, I'm ready to go right this minute. If I felt like it was my time to go right now, I would grudgingly, to some degree, pass on knowing that it was my time to go and that there really wasn't much I could do about that. But that having been said, I'm not ready to go unless it's the, the Lord's time for me to leave this planet. That's the first thing that I want to say. But I want to talk on the idea of living forever, forever on the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host, I'm Curtin. Today is Monday, the 23rd of May of 2022. Welcome to everyone who's here on the Rum on Rumble, on the podcast, on YouTube, on BitChute, on CloudHub, on my Facebook page. That's the Kurt's Religion and Politics page there. On Kurt's Religion and Politics at Locals.com. On MindsMINDS.com. On the Kurt's Religion and Politics group there. Should only be that one today on Parlor on Gab on Twitter or wherever else you might happen to pick me up today. I want to talk again on the subject of living forever and I'm going to go through my notes to give you some idea where I stand on this idea so that we can kind of expand on that in conversation afterwards. When I was a kid I had no concept of time. The result is I was pretty much unencumbered by the idea of death. It didn't even, and that's probably part of the reason I had no concept of time by the way. Maybe it's not as common as I imagine, but if I had to guess, I would say most young people just don't think about such things. I won't go so far as to say that most people who are, you know, don't have a lot of age on them imagine living forever, but most probably don't think about life ending. For them, blissful ignorance drives an existence that doesn't even tend to think about living forever in any meaningful way. Over time, I think we all come to a place where we recognize our impending cessation, at least in this current form, and maybe for some, no hope of a future after death exists at all. At that point, many began to dream, begin to dream, excuse me, of living forever, not began, begin. Uh, the funny thing is, I never recall having a desire to be eternal, not even before I was a Christian. That's not something that I ever wanted to be, boys and girls. Not this kid. Again, it's hard to say how normal I am in that regard. Looking at my beliefs as a Christian, I understand there's an eternal future to be found there. But I really wanted to, to discuss the idea of living forever in this current way. As, I begun, as I've begun to get a few years on me, I've come to what some might consider an odd conclusion. I don't want to live forever in this current state of being. Even if I ignore the hope of a better place, and really I can't, uh, getting older and ever more frail just doesn't seem optimal to me. Now, you could make an argument that along with increased longevity, folks might also count on increased health. I should say uh, a couple of things about this. The first is, not all people die in expected ways. You can be hit by a car and killed more or less instantly. As I've said in past podcasts, war has made it possible for people uh, uh, who wouldn't have uh, let's see, I, I'm, I'm stumbling on my notes here, who wouldn't have imagined uh, that people, for people who couldn't have, it couldn't have been imagined, could have been revived, much less, more or less reconstructed, to go on to live more or less productive lives. Yeah, my notes were kind of bad there. Sorry, that was my fault. Even so, there are things that can happen, a car accident or a house burning down in which peop the people inside are not found for days, having passed on early in the event, or which in which a person was basically incinerated, that can never be fixed. But even if we imagine a sort of resurrection could happen at some time, and I'm talking about an earthly one, not a heavenly one, I believe totally that that can be true, but at some time in the future, that doesn't mean all is hunky-dory. In the course of time, as one gets older, there's a tendency for most of us, again, maybe not everyone, to begin to realize something important. I'm not looking to die anytime soon, uh, though I can't know how that'll work for certain, but I have to tell you, I've managed to survive for more than half a century. If I pass on tomorrow, there are things that would cause me consternation 
uh, were I still able to think about them? Who will take care of my son comes to mind. That's one of those things that would bother me. Though that's true, I can tell you this, but for such things, going the way of the dinosaur is not a huge thing to me at this point. On the other side of the coin, living forever does not sound like a good thing to me. I can imagine becoming exhausted with just getting up and around, much less trying to continue to thrive. I'm not there now, but I can surely see it's likely to come my way as time goes on. You may think living forever sounds like a great idea. For my part, I'm not excited by that concept. I'm just not. I'm not, again, I want to be clear. Am I saying I'm anywhere near the point where I feel like I'm no longer thriving or life is no longer moving forward and I'm not learning new lessons and important things aren't happening and I'm not doing good and important things in my life? No, I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying when I look at my uh, over 90-year-old neighbor, when I look at my 86-year-old mama before she passed away, I realize that there's a place that you come to where A, health begins to really fail. You think you've seen failing health? Look at an 86 or a 90 year old. Now, to be fair, my neighbor is not in horrible shape where that's concerned at this point, which is kind of amazing when you think about it. And I'm glad, I'm not, I'm not upset about that, I promise you. But, um, but even so, health begins to fail. We begin to falter, we begin to fail, our memories drop and various other things happen that are not things that we would rather have or see other people go through. It's just, That's just not how that works. So from my perspective, I look at that alone and I think unless you can improve that drastically from where it is right now, today, then living a long time, even living a prolonged life is not a great, great idea to me. But living past your 150th birthday, no. Living past 120, probably not. Living past 110, for most people, the answer is it's not going to happen anyway. But assuming that it did, I have to say, I think for most of them, they stop having reasons to live. And it's very hard to make that a thing for them. Some people live in, uh, and then up until the day they die, have meaning and so forth in their lives. Uh, lots of people that you're going to meet, that is just not the case as you get to know them when they get older. You'll see that that's true. And when they're sitting in that nursing home, I promise you some of them are not so much begging to die, but very much ready to do so. Some of them lose all memory of what's going on, and some of them are liter literally fed by somebody to keep them alive. But when it comes right down to it, this idea of living forever, at l certainly in, with the idea that we're not in any better uh, physical condition than most people who hit their 80th or 90th birthdays are. But even if you do that, there's there's this sort of weariness of the soul that sort of sets in on people as they get older. And it's already started to some very small extent to me. I get up sometimes and I think, what on earth am I here for? Now, I'm not going to tell you that that doesn't wear off pretty quickly for me most of the time. And as I say that, I don't have a bunch of things that I think are important and necessary for me to do. That having been said, though, I want for you to understand completely this is a thing. It's a thing, okay? And you need to not believe <clears throat> that it's not, okay? Living forever does not sound like a grand idea to me. And if I were you, it wouldn't sound like a great grand idea when you get older, probably either, if you're not to that place yet. Again, am I saying I want to, I definitely want to die before my 100th birthday? No, I wouldn't make that statement. And that's a ways off, you know, that's 40 years off, whatever. But I'm still telling you that at some point I see myself coming to the place in life where I'm ready to go. <clears throat> my... Uh, my sister-in-law passed away recently, and I, I, I'm going to miss her, and I've said that everybody around is going to miss her. <clears throat> but I think in the end, she reconciled herself to the fact that living as she was at that point was no way to live, and that it was time to go. And I don't think that had she been given the choice beforehand, she probably would have said, that sounds like a good thing to me. I'm not trying to say that. I may live, like I say, another 40 years. I may live another 50 years. Anything's possible. I may live another 20 years. I may die tomorrow. I really don't know. I'm not ready to go right now, but I can tell you that I can imagine, I can envision a time when that would not be a surprising or amazing thing by any stretch of the imagination. And this is what I want for people to get. 
This is what I want you to grasp and to understand that that is in fact the case. Um, so I, you know, you talk about living forever and I go, yeah, that's an interesting concept. But what happens when the sun does finally supernova and takes the earth with it? <laughs> you better hope you're on another planet by that point, boys and girls, or living forever doesn't sound like a great idea. There are some really, there are some things to me that can bring that concept down really, really fast. But one of them is you kind of get to that point where you've seen so many things that I, I think very few things end up surprising you. Okay, I need to go ahead and wrap this up. This is this has been the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host, Sam Curtin. Today is Monday, the 23rd of May of 2022, that beginning of the work week for people who work the 9 to 5. And I'm not going to call it the grind today, but that 9 to 5, Monday through Friday uh, shift, if you will. Um, tomorrow will be Tuesday, the 24th of May of 2022. Again, working ever closer to the middle of the week. Uh, thank you for everyone who's been here on Rumble, on the podcast, on YouTube, on BitChute, on CloudHub, on my Facebook page. That would be the Kurtz Religion and Politics page there. On Kurtz Religion and Politics dot my, uh, locals dot com, excuse me, Kurtz Religion and Politics dot locals dot com. On Minds, M I N D S dot com, getting ahead of myself. Uh, particular, uh, typically on the Kurtz Religion and Politics group on Minds, on Parlor, on Gab, on Twitter, or wherever else you happen to be seeing or hearing me today. I uh, hope that you're having a good day and that everything is going well for you. Subject for today has been living forever. And tomorrow we're going to talk about medical advances and sort of my perspective on those. Uh, again, I hope everything is going well for you and continues to do so. And hopefully we will see you again on tomorrow's edition. That will be Tuesday, the 24th of May's edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schuett. This podcast was created on Monday, the 23rd of May of 2022. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's religion and politics. Thanks for watching today's edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. Don't forget to come back tomorrow uh, to check out the next one. Remember, on various platforms, primarily Rumble, YouTube, Big Shoot, and CloudHub, and the audio podcast, you can subscribe to my content. For the audio podcast, you probably want to use Apple, Google, or Spotify. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. In order to find me on those platforms, you can go to the Kurtz Religion and Politics channels on Rumble, YouTube, BitChute, and CloudHub. You can also get to my content on Facebook by finding the Kurtz Religion and Politics page there, Minds, M-I-N-D-S dot com, uh, you, where you will find me at the Kurtz Religion and Politics group, and Kurtz Religion and Politics dot locals dot com as well. You can look there. I post my daily video on various social media sites, really only about three, Parlor, Gab, and Twitter at present. I am at KP Schubert on each of them, and you can find me under them, and you can find the videos under me. Uh, you should be able to find my podcasts on Google and Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It's also on podcasts.kpshubert.com. That's podcasts with an S, dot K-P-S-H-U-B-E-R-T dot com. Uh, if, if you're looking for me on various of the podcast sites, you probably want to search Kurtz Religion and Politics, not The Daily Summation. Keep in mind, you can subscribe to my content various on various places that I put it. Uh, all constructive feedback is welcome. You can like, dislike, add a rumble, or give whatever feedback is available on any of the platforms that you can do such things. You can add, also add a comment on what I put there. Unless you're advertising or doing something that I believe will harm others, I'll leave your comments out there even if I don't agree with or understand them. I will try to let you know I've seen them when possible and may reply if I feel it's reasonable, appropriate, and possible, of course. Thanks again for viewing this edition of the Daily Summation for Kurtz Politics. Don't forget to come back again for tomorrow's as well.